Hello, hello, my Bible journaling beauty. Welcome to Tuesdays to Create, a monthly Bible journaling challenge series designed for beginners. I'm Amanda from Move the Mountains, and I'll be your host today. Today, we are going to dive into hand lettering while talking about fear and trust. So I hope you're ready, because it's going to get real, real fast. <laughs> now, let's open our Bibles to Psalm 56.3, which says, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Fear is a very real feeling, but it's not something we can touch. The battle of fear goes on in our minds and in our hearts. And in Psalm 56, David is physically captured by an enemy, the Philistines. And he's in the middle of a war and there's a lot of uncertainty and he is scared. Now this can echo in our lives in a spiritual way. We have an enemy, and when our fear is strong, we can feel like we've been captured by him and we're emotionally bound in fear. For example, if you're facing financial hardship and you're not able to pay your bills or put food on the table, that's a pretty real fear. Uh, or maybe you're chronically ill with cancer and if you die, you don't know what's going to happen to your family. Maybe your spouse is overseas fighting for our country's freedom, and you're worried that you're going to get that call at any moment. These are legitimate fears. They are 100% understandable. But you serve a God who is bigger than all those things. God is bigger than money, cancer, physical danger. He's bigger than all of those things. And you know what? What's even better than that? He is on your side. Now, God says in his words that he does not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Do you hear that? That's huge. It's in the Bible in 2 Timothy 1.7. Now, if you are dealing with fear right now, you need that verse. Because when the fear, spirit of fear comes on you and it's trying to take root in your heart, you need to take that spirit, rip it out, and plant this verse there instead. 2 Timothy 1.7 shows us that God does not give us a spirit of fear, and it's not His will for us to be paralyzed by it. So He has given us the tools we need to overcome fear. Power, love, and self-control. This is huge, my friends. If you are dealing with anxiety and fear right now, you need this verse. Looking back to Psalm 56, we see David, despite his fear, he declares his trust in God is more than what he sees in his situation. How can he do this? Because David knows the promises God has given him, and he knows God's character. God is good. God is faithful. He is the promise keeper. He is our provider. When faced with certain death, David chooses to put his trust in God. Now, David acknowledges that he is facing a very real fear, but he, instead of choosing to believe the enemy's power, he puts his trust in God to keep him safe, provide a way out, and deliver him. Now, my friend, when it comes to fear, you are putting your trust in one of two places, in the enemy's ability or in God's ability. Now, which one you believe in will actually give power to that one. Why? Because the battle of fear goes on in your mind and it goes on in your heart. Only you can choose where to put your trust. And that is kind of like a hard realization. <laughs> But there's hope. I'm going to give you a faith action plan that will help you put your trust in God's ability over the enemies. Now, I want to say sorry, not sorry, if this is all a little intense. I like to try to keep things happy, but these are very real things that we deal with. And years ago, I had been crippled by fear, and I don't want anybody to be crippled by fear. And as Christians, we don't have to be, we shouldn't be, we should be free. And there is a way to do it because we can trust in God. So I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. So on to hand lettering. Now, if you're unfamiliar with hand lettering, the basics of it are using two different kinds of fonts like I have here, and then lettering them within some kind of border which can be invisible or not. Now, just if you're wondering what a font is, it's a typeface or a character you use on a computer when you open a Word document and you start typing. 
Today, for our hand lettering, our border is going to be visible, and we're going to use a circle. You can use a coffee cup or anything round um, and small to trace for your circle. Mine's about two and a half inches across. In addition to our art, we are going to write a faith action plan about how we are personally going to use 2 Timothy 1 7. We need this action plan because we can hear the word of God, but if we don't let it take root in our heart and act on it, the word won't help us very much. So as always, I'm going to go ahead and do this, uh, this hand lettering in pencil so that I can perfect my doodle flowers and leaves before I use my micron pen. The micron pen sizes that I'm using today for inside the circle is 03, and everything outside the circle is 005, and that's the flowers and the foliage. Now, I sent you guys another download with this one, and you're free to use it for inspiration or tracing or whatever. It's just a bunch of cute flower arrangements that I'm using as inspiration for this artwork. And I always find that art turns out better when I use something for, for reference. And it's okay to copy if you're a budding artist. It's just a great trick. And that's how you grow. You just copy until you can do it yourself. Now, always try to remember that when you're creating your art, that at least in the Western world, our eyes track left to right naturally. And our eyes are pleased by a piece of art that flows from left to right through the center. So just always keep that in mind. You may even want to draw a diagonal through your circle so you can help keep that in perspective. Now, the faith action plan that I was going to talk to you about is actually something I think every Christian needs to use. It is where you take a topic you're currently struggling with in your Christian walk, you find verses that speak into that struggle. Then, when you have thoughts about stumbling on, in your struggle, you say these verses out loud or in your head instead of thinking those thoughts that might cause you to stumble. So, for example, uh, my little baby doesn't like to sleep right now, and I am tired. <laughs> we'll just say, yeah, I'm tired. Um, and some days when I have to wake up early for work, I, I just don't want to, and the alarm goes off, and I'm like, I just want to sleep. But this morning, I really needed a verse, and I was scrolling through my Instagram feed, and I saw Psalm 55, 22. And it said, cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. And it was so weird when I, you know, contemplated this morning hitting my snooze. I said, God, I don't want to do this. <laughs> and he said, get up, I will sustain you, which I don't talk like that. And so I was like, okay, that's, that's God, you know, and then he gave me that verse. And so that's going to be my, my faith action plan today. When I feel exhausted, I'm going to say this verse because God will sustain me. So using an example with uh, Psalm 56, three and being fear, being afraid and putting your trust in God. So if you're afraid that you won't have income to pay the bills, you can find and quote verses that prove God's faithfulness and ability to provide. So this would be an example of a faith action plan. When I begin to fear about finances, I will tell that fear to leave in Jesus' name. Say out loud 2 Timothy 1.7, Philippians 4.19, and Matthew 6.31-33. Then once you've quoted scripture, you can thank God for three things and then praise him for stuff he's already done for you. And that's a faith action plan. You name your struggle, tell it to leave in Jesus' name, and quote verses that supports God's plan for you. Then you thank him. It's super easy, right? So we have left space on our page for our faith action plan. And this is one of those awesome things about Bible journaling that in six years or six months or even six weeks, you can come back and look at where you were at when you wrote your faith action plan and then see how far you've come in your walk with God. It's so important that we remember where we've been so we can appreciate where we are. Just like I did in January, I created another free printable download for you. It's in the description below. It's just the art that I used for inspiration, and you can use it for inspiration or you can trace it for your art. When you're all done with your Bible journaling entry, I would love for you to share it with me on Instagram using the hashtag Tuesdays to create. Now, if this video was helpful for you, I would love if you like it and follow my YouTube channel for more Bible journaling updates. 
Also, I would love to hear what your thoughts are on the Faith Action Plan and if you plan on using it in the future. So go ahead and tell me your, your ideas and your thoughts in the comments below. And that's all for us today, my Bible journaling beauties. I will see you next month and peace and love.